Hello everyone and welcome back. Let's now cover some more advanced Angular features. We are going to cover the ng template and ng container core directives. We are going to use them to improve our tab container. We are going to add to the tab container the possibility of overriding the default look and feel of the tab buttons. So not only the styles, but the ability to override the HTML itself. Let's have a look at this. So here we are giving this default look and feel where we have the buttons here inside this div with this particular set of CSS classes. This is a very common way of styling tab buttons. But usually, for example, on mobile, what you see is something that looks closer to a plain HTML button with some styling. So we would like this component to still use as default, if nothing else is specified, it's going to apply as default this default uh, look and feel. But if we provide to the component a different way of implementing the tab header buttons, that would be taken instead. So the way that this works is we are going to pass in a template to the component as an input property. So let's introduce the notion of templates and the ng template Angular core directive. So if we go here to the tab panel component, we see here that the look and feel of the buttons in this case would always be this list with a series of buttons that we have here with these very specific CSS classes. So now let's see how could we make this specific part of the template overridable. We are going to use here the ng template core tag directive and we are going to move our implementation of this part of our template here inside this template. So the ng template tag will not be rendered to the screen but we can use it to render uh, functionality. So we are going to give it a name to this template and we are going to call it the default tabs header template. We're going to define here an input property for this template. We are going to call it tabs and we are going to pass it in the tabs variable of our component. Notice that here the input parameter variable of the template is named tabs, which has the same name as the component member variable tabs. These are actually two separate variables that could have two completely different names. With this in mind, let's now switch back to our tab component. We are just going to fix here a couple of things, so we are not using the constructor. Also, let's guard against the possible occurrence of a type error that could occur if we have not yet defined any tabs inside the tab container. We are going to check if the first property of the tabs member variable is present before accessing it. So now let's go back here to our ng template instance. We have now moved the implementation of the list of buttons inside the template, but we are not using the template here elsewhere on this component. And because of that, the tab buttons are not being rendered to the screen. So the template by default does not get displayed on the screen. It's just a definition of a section of our component template. We now need to take the ng template and instantiate it. There are multiple ways of consuming templates. One of them is to use the ng container tag. ng container will not result in any DOM elements to be rendered to the screen, but it will allow us, for example, to apply a structural directive on top of it, such as ng if or ng for. So if you would ever find yourself in a situation where you want to iterate through something, let's say the tabs, and you would like to iterate without rendering something to the screen in that particular tag, ng container would be an example. So in this case, we are going to be using ng container to apply another structural directive that already exists in Angular. So it's not ng if or ng for, it's ng template outlet. So this structural directive takes as input a template and renders it on the screen. So the first argument that we pass in to this directive is the template that we want to render. And as the second argument, we can pass in an optional context object. So this context object would contain the inputs that are needed by the template. So in the case of this template, it's only one property named tabs and we were already filling it in at the level of the ng template tag. 
but we could have not provided that value there if we did not know it upfront and we can also alternatively provide it in a completely programmatic way. Let's see how we could do that. So after the semicolon here, we are going to specify another property, which is the context. We're going to separate with a semicolon and to the context, we are going to pass in a plain JavaScript object that we are going to call tabs context. And we're going to see what do we need to pass in here in order to render the template. If we switch back here to the component, let's quickly implement here a getter for this tabs context property. We are going to have it return a plain JavaScript object with one property. We are going to call it tabs. So this corresponds to the input property that the template needs as input. And we're going to populate with this property the value of the tabs property that we have here at the level of the component. So if we now hit Ctrl S, let's see what happens. So as you can see, our ng template is now being applied to the component as expected. So now we have the same look and feel as before, but we could now replace this template, the default tabs header template, by another template that was externally provided to the component. Let's see how we can do that and effectively customize the look and feel of the component with alternative HTML. This is coming right up in the next lesson.